a brand new emergency ban list that does so much, yet so freaking little. But hey, Mystic Minds ban. You know what that means? We don't get no more baby back BS of people topping with that garbage. So let's dive on into this craziness, shall we? Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is your host with the most, Avery LR32 here, and destroy the ever-living boo-boo emergency ban list boo-boo stain. <laughs> Off of that subscribe button. I love changing it up a little bit. So that we can climb even further beyond the 1K ladder. I really appreciate all the support. We're currently sitting at 1,030 subscribers. Holy ball sacks, Batman. That is insane. So thank you so much for all the support. No matter what video you're coming from, maybe you subscribe because you saw me bitch about Dark World or something. I don't know. But ladies and gentlemen, I wanted to actually sit down and talk about the ban list and implications that we could see uh, moving into this new format, sort of, not really with an asterisk, maybe a side of a dollar sign and an exclamation point. I don't know what you want to call it. I do, as I thought about it more, it is sort of an emergency ban list, but not really because they didn't really do a whole lot. So it's almost kind of like an in-between, like a Twilight Zone type of thing. It's a bit of a gray area, I think would be the better term to say. But regardless, Curios and Mystic Mind were banned. So let's kind of get these obvious things out of the way. Curios, I feel like, suffered from Halky Fibrax Syndrome. And by that, I mean that it wasn't always a problem, but when it was a problem, it was a big issue. Like, you can't tell me that a card like that combined with Nightmare Griffin being able to fetch you basically any card that you need, whether it's Anti-Spell, Imperial Order, Goes and Match, Deck Devastation Virus, whatever. Like, that's some shit that we don't need in the game, ladies and gentlemen. Like, it's not often that prize cards get banned because I'm pretty sure Curios was a prize card. I could be wrong. I'm, I'm thinking of Minerva, actually. I don't think Curios was a prize card. Um, regardless, it's another Link Monster to add to the graveyard pile of Link Monsters that have been banned. You know, it was a problem before we got the Ishizu stuff, so it was kind of weird that they banned it even though it wasn't an issue, but... I'd rather it just not be an issue at all and just not have to worry about it and just let it be banned. I also felt like it was kind of like a lavable chain thing. You know, lavable chain could dump any monster you need and give you plays and things like that. Similar to that. Now, let's talk about the bigger uh, mystical mine in the room. Mystic mine itself. This card is a bucket of boo-boo stained dog shit. Let me tell you what, man. Uh, <laughs> I'm already seeing people online saying, I'm just going to play a stun deck with Fire Prison. Don't play fucking Fire Prison. Fire Prison sucks. Take your bad somewhere else. Don't bring it up in my comment section. <laughs> I'm kidding, obviously. But please don't play Fire Prison and, and get your asshole stomped in by a tier element player. It, it seems good, but just play Necro Valley. Really, Fire Prison is garbage. Like, just stop. Please, just, just stop. I get it. People loved Mystic Mind. There were people like me who loved it and also hated it and understood why it needed to be banned. Hell, my the, when I did a deck profile of the first place Mystic Mind burn deck from YCS Brazil of this year, it has over 14,000 views. It's the second most popular video on my channel now, which is insane considering I've got a video that's like over 10 years old that's the most popular, but regardless. Um, so I understand people love Mystic Mind. And I understand that it is a way to stop aggressive meta decks. But the fact that you had decks that could solely revolve around it as their win con, you know, any Mystic Mind burn deck, Mystic Mind mill, Mystic Mind whatever, that it could be thrown into so many different strategies as like a going first or second card, depending on your deck, is just insane. There's no reason a card like that should exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! And to me, it's almost kind of like a 4D chess type of thing. Like if... In the sense of, if you have to play Mystic Mind to stop these boards and hope that they don't negate or pop your Mystic Mind, you were losing the ball game anyway, pimp. And I feel that that's really what that comes down to. Like, if, if you're... It's, it's kind of like if you have to play bad cards to get to more bad cards, which is kind of like Crystal Beast. Like, you're playing bad cards in the form of the Crystal Beast, and you're using bad cards like Crystal Bond, debatably, Rainbow Bridge, debatably, to get you to more bad cards. So it's kind of like you're just losing the game anyway. And then you're using cards like Mystic Mind and Necro Valley to try and stun out the opponent. But then if those don't stick, you're losing the game anyway. So, like, why does it matter? Um, I think it's funny, too, that Macro and Deepfish are both at three. This helps Flunder more than Cash Tier. I see all the talk being around Flunder for good reason. I mean, Flunder is probably going to be the second best deck of the format now. I feel like Exosister can still compete. 
but that's going to have to be, we're going to have to wait and see on that. Flunder being able to have so much banishing now is insane. Kashtira does have access to that, but like, it really doesn't matter. Like, they're already playing Shifter, most likely. Um, and the deck still loses to fucking Nibiru. So, like, I don't care how much banishing you're playing, because those could just be bricks, especially if you're not going first. They're just going to be side decked at the end of the day. Um, Metaverse coming to three is obvious just because of the fact that, you know, Mystic Mind's now banned. We're probably going to see a lot of decks side decking like three Metaverse with three Necro Valley if they're not main decking it just to be able to shut out tier element from playing because they try and activate an effect or you see where their play is going down the line. You can just activate Metaverse to play out the Necro Valley just because that's very consistent. So I think we will see a lot of that moving forward. I don't even know what the prices are. I haven't even really looked at the market. I just got home from being out all day. Um, and on top of that too, Teller Knight Ptolemus going from zero to three is kind of like, I guess, I, I don't I don't really feel like we're in the days where making a Ptolemus, uh, whether you're playing Pendulum or something else and going into like a Cyber Dragon Nova to go into an Infinity is not that good anymore. Like it provides you an Omni Negate, but like it doesn't help Kash Tira because Kash Tira isn't going to play level fours just to go for the Ptolemyus play to hopefully get to an Infinity to stop the Nibiru. And like that's the biggest thing holding back Cash Tira right now in next format post Photon Hypernova obviously is the fact that it just can't play around Nibiru. Like Nibiru is going to be so much better come 2023 with Photon Hypernova and probably another new ban list. Um, and Dark World, which is funny too, gets even more dog shit because now we have three D Fisher with three Macro. So it's like, now I'm really asking the question, how do you, not only how do you beat tier with Dark World, now I'm asking the Dark World community the question of how do you even win with Dark World at this point? Like, now you have to wonder, what's my game plan against Flunder? Like, you can't beat Flunder. You can't beat that shit. Like, what are you doing? They've got, what, nine cards to banish with? Three Fisher, three Macro, three D Shifter. Like, we're going to see a lot of stun decks revolving around banishing. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Eado's Control became uh, a stun deck again because you could just activate D Fisher or, like, set a macro or something, drop out the Guardian Eados as, like, a beat stick. You've got the D Fisher to lock out the grave, and now the opponent's dealing with a 2,500 beat stick. You can maybe equip it like a Moon Mirror. That's probably not even going to be a thing, but, I mean... It's something. Stun decks are definitely... Stun decks are going to be rogue. Like, that. that's my big, bold prediction for this format. Is like, someone's going to walk on in with their giant inspector border cock <laughs> and just slam it on the table, activate a D-Fisher, set three, and tell them to go. Like, that's literally going to be what they do. And the tier element player is just going to draw for turn. They're going to look around the room and be like, I like last format more. <laughs> Like, that, that's really what's going to happen. And then if the stun player is bad and, like, plays Fire Prison, then it's just like, well, I was losing anyway. You don't need to be playing Fire Prison, but okay. <laughs> so, uh, it's it's a really interesting list. I mean, there's not really anything else that's important. Like, let's just be honest here. Recital Starling to 2 is just like, what the fuck ever? Like, okay, cool. Like, Tri Brigade has a new toy to play with, and that deck died a long time ago when the Fire Nation attacked, which is tier element in this case. Um... There's not really anything else to three of super importance that I can really think of. Uh, Batalamias, D Fisher Macro, uh, Metaverse, like we already talked about all that. Like this list, other than that, is just kind of whatever. I mean, it's still a tier zero format. Like that that's the thing that I think people need to understand is that this list is cool. Don't get me wrong. It definitely shakes up the format. But outside of the Mystic Mine and Curios bands... Uh, oh, well, I'm sorry. Herald of Orange Light 1. I mean, no one's going to play it at 1. By putting it to 1, they basically just banned it because no one's going to play 1 Orange Light. Like, if anything, that just really hurts Nachuria because now they don't have a reliable hand trap that will help them mill and get off plays on the opponent's turn and to negate a monster effect. So, I don't really know why they would hit Orange Light other than just because it's broken with the Ashizu stuff. Now, when we get another ban list, which will definitely be in 2023 when we get Photon Hypernova, and we'll also get a new regional season because the regional uh, locations haven't been updated yet, probably not until we get Hypernova, um, I think we will see the Ashizu stuff get hit. I think we will see Tier get hit. I think we will see Sprite get hit. We're going to see things that probably could have been hit on this list, but Konami doesn't want to mess with that. 
and they're going to just open up the floodgates and hit a bunch of stuff on the next new ban list that we get in 2023. Until then, it's just a matter of waiting and seeing and just having a good time with the new toys that we have to play with for the next couple months. Because all we have is a couple remote dual YCSs that no one's going to give a shit about because they're remote dual YCSs. Everybody and their mom is going to be cheating. So, I mean, the year of Yu-Gi-Oh! is basically over at this point unless you still go to locals, whether it's this old format or the new format. So... I, in the meantime, am going to be playtesting Kastashira and figuring out how to play around Nibiru because that's going to be a tier one deck, in my opinion. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. Is there something I'm missing? Is there something that you're excited to test? Are you going to hold a funeral for Mystic Mind? We might make that into a video where we hold a funeral for Mystic Mind. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.